so first of all why do we need spanning tree protocol when we are designing our topology okay so the the the, the encapsulation which we learned uh, the dot 1q mm -hmm. is it related to spanning tree 802.1q no, no 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 see okay. wait i'll tell you for example we have one topology i will show you here okay because i saw the same number here also okay so just asking <laughs> all right for example we have one topology here on your right hand side right now i am designing it okay okay and let's say two pcs are connected with this two pcs are connected to two switches is it yeah okay okay now these two pcs can communicate with each other if they are in same network all right yes yes fine and what happen if the middle cable this cable that the cable which is joining two switches will tear down or something happen to this cable so then communication will be lost correct because of that reason what we did we provided a redundant cable what is it sorry redundant cable is it yeah means okay we are providing the communication in a better way so if one cable is tear down if something happen to one cable so the communication will not stop and it will continue right okay yes so in the yes, same right. yeah in the same way here if i have three pcs and all are in one network okay so these three pcs can communicate with each other but the problem with the redundant links are number one broadcast strong see by default you know that all the cisco switches by default they broadcast the frames right yes right yes so if the broadcasting is happening from the from from this side let's take this example from from this side and from this side also and from this side also and from this side and from this side and from from this side so all the switches will broadcast simultaneously in all the directions then the loop will happen the loop will create right uh loop uh, when you're saying loop uh, what is loop okay hmm. for example the frame is from here the frame is going down and the frame is going up again the same frame and the frame is continuously moving from this switch to that switch continuously so that is a kind of loop layer to loop oh okay 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 so this is data link layer loop is it yeah layer 2 okay, okay. and okay. if the loop will happen again and again and the frames will the same frame will reach again and again to the same switch and the switch will again forward the same frame to the second switch then what will happen the mac oh. table instability will happen mac table will not stable again okay, and again okay. the switch will change the mac address right okay, okay and the third okay. thing yeah and the third point is duplicate frames duplication will will happen if yeah yeah these correct yeah if these two links these two links if this orange light will not be there uh, this is a blocking port if all the ports are green all the ports are in the forwarding state then the frames will go up then go down then go up and go down so three things will happen duplication of frames mac table instability and broadcast strong will happen correct 
Okay. Yes. Okay, fine. Now see this, uh, see this uh, diagram. There are three switches connected with each other and we have a redundant link. So if one link fail, so the frame will reach from the different side and the connectivity will be continuously, we will get the connectivity. Okay. Okay. Between okay. these three, between these three switches. Now, uh -huh. how the spanning tree will work? Now see this. First, see the diagram mm -hmm. and understand something what is happening here. And after that, after that, I will explain. Okay. Okay. So switch one is sending hello packet to switch three and switch two. No. And All the switches no, are yeah. sending BPDU, bridge protocol data unit to each other. What is BPDU? Wait, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh -huh. So all the switches will send the BPDU because they are trying to find a root switch, root bridge. They are, they are trying to find a root bridge. So once the root bridge is ready, one will become the root bridge and then the spanning tree protocol will start. The mm -hmm. first step in spanning tree protocol is finding a root bridge. Step two is mm -hmm. put the root interface into a forwarding state and then step three is each non-port switch select its root ports step four is remaining links choose a designated port and step five is all other ports are put into the blocking state so you can see here in this topology the loop will not happen the duplication of frames will not happen because here you can see one port is blocked block port right yes yes one port is blocked yeah so how this is happening so when we have three switches each switch will say i am the root bridge each okay. yeah each switch will say i am the root bridge and for the election process each switch will send the bpdu bridge protocol data unit each switch will send in three seconds. In each three seconds, they will share the BPDU with each other. BPDU is a bridge protocol data unit contains switch priority plus the plus MAC address of that particular switch. Okay. Okay, it contains the uh, what and all switch priority and MAC address. Yeah, it? switch priority and MAC address. Okay. It okay. has the own switch priority and own MAC address, the base MAC address of the switch and sharing with each other. All three switches are sharing with each other and they are, they are trying to find a root bridge. Okay. So when they, when they are finding the root bridge, they will see two things. One is number one, switch priority the first criteria to find out the root bridge switch priority now what is the switch priority every cisco switch has a default priority of 32768 fine 32768 is the default priority plus the extension number extension num number is nothing but the vlan id number you can see here on each switch, I have written here priority 32,769. Why? The default is 32,768. The plus one is the VLAN ID number. If all these switches are in VLAN 2, then it will be plus two. It will be plus two. It will be plus two. But the default priority value is 32,768, right? And okay. To find okay. out, yeah, to find out the root bridge, they are looking, first of all, they are looking for priority value. Each switch will compare his priority value and the priority value and the MAC address they are getting with the help of these BPDU, they will compare. The lowest priority value will win. If 
the priority value is same. You can see here the BPDU is revolving and sharing by each switch one by one. The priority value is same on all the switches. Thirty-two thousand seven sixty-nine. Correct? Yes. Yes. So Correct. the second criteria of choosing a root bridge is the lowest MAC address. Now you can see the switch one MAC address is the switch one MAC address. The switch one oh, MAC yeah, address, switch address, address, address is the lowest. Yeah, triple one. Yes. Switch two is triple two. Double one, double yes. one, double one, double one, like that. MAC address of Swiss two is two, 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 two. Swiss three MAC address is three, 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 like that. So if you compare these MAC address, you will find out that the Swiss one MAC address is the lowest one. Correct? Yes. Yes. So th <laughs> so that is the reason the Swiss one will become the root bridge. You got my point? Oh, okay, okay. So this is a kind of an election process. Yes, exactly. This is a election process. Fine. Once okay. they find out the root bridge, so here the root bridge is our switch one. Let's see what will happen now. Initially, when you connect all the switches, they will start sharing their BPDU. In every three seconds, Cisco switches will share the BPDU. BPDU contains. Switch priority plus MAC address, root bridge, root bridge ID, own bridge ID, right? Initially, own bridge ID, and they are comparing, and they are sharing. The election pro process is happening. Every switch is telling that I am the root bridge. I am the root bridge. So this will happen after they will share the BPDU. After comparison, the BPDU, they will check the priority. The priority value, if the priority value is same. Then the switch will compare the MAC address and the lowest MAC address. The switch which has the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge. Fine. Now, once they select the root bridge, after that the ports that are directly connected with the root bridge that will become DP, designated port. Fine. That will become a designated port. Designated ports are port. Which ports with the best cost to the root bridge on a link? It has the best cost, means nearest to the root bridge. You can understand in this way: the ports which is directly connected to the root bridge, those ports will become the designated port (DP). Okay. These are in forwarding state. Correct. Hello. Mm, yes, yes, Shailesh. Okay, listening. fine. So these ports will become the designated port. Now come down to switch three and switch two. Now one port is here. You can see in green color RP. Right, root ports. These two ports are root port. How we will choose the root port? The first criteria is lowest cost towards the root towards the root bridge. The there are the cost. These links are showing the cost. I will show you here. See what is the cost? Yeah. See, these are the cost. If the link is 10 Mbps, the cost will be 100. If the link is 100 Mbps, the cost will be 19. If the link is 1 Gbps, the cost will be 4. And if the link is 10 Gbps, the cost will be 2. Here the link are fast Ethernet. Okay, so here the cost is nineteen. Okay. Yeah, here the cost is nineteen. So, how the switch will choose the root port? Criteria are see here. Root port criteria. First one, lowest cost to root bridge. Lowest cost to the root bridge. Correct. Yes. Yes. So, from Swiss three. From Swiss two, from both side, if you see the cost is same, cost is nineteen. From here to here, link cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, the link cost is nineteen. So, what is the second criteria? Lowest second. neighbor bridge ID. Lowest okay. neighbor bridge ID. See, the lowest neighbor bridge ID is. 
Lowest neighbor bridge ID. What is the bridge ID? Okay, the bridge ID is the MAC address. If I'm saying the bridge ID or the switch ID, both are same. Bridge ID oh. and both and the switch ID both both are same. Okay, so then it's switch one with the lowest bridge ID. Right? Not we are talking about RP. RP. Oh, RP right? Yeah, RP okay. is root ports. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So the lowest okay. cost, yeah, lowest cost towards the root bridge. If you see this port and this port on Swiss three, there are two ports. One port is here, second port is here. So the lowest cost towards the root bridge is is nineteen from here, from from this side, right? Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. go and if you go from this side, then you will see nineteen and nineteen. I will show you okay. here. Just give me one minute. Okay. See, this is 19. This is 19. And this is 19. Okay. So the lowest cost to. Oh, I can't see that screen. You can't see? No, I can only see the PPT. Yeah, fine, right? Now, now it's fine. I can. Uh, <clears throat> no, still I can see only the PPT. Yes, I am showing you the PPT only. Who oh, is it? Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought we were trying something. Uh, okay. <laughs> so from Swiss three, if the frame will go from this side, the cost is nineteen. If the frame will go from this side, the cost will be nineteen plus nineteen. Okay. So the okay. low. So okay. the lowest cost is this one. So this port will become RP. Oh, okay, okay. Root ports. Okay. In, in the same way, this will become the root port. Okay. On Swiss 2, this will become the root port. Lowest cost towards root bridge. This is the lowest cost. Mm. Fine? Yes. Now, yes, right. now the third point. Now we have remaining. See, now we have remaining this link. Now can you see that? This link. Which link? The yellow line. Ah uh, yes, yes, I can see. Here. Yes. Okay. So which will become the block port and which will become the designated port here? If you have this kind of condition, then what will you do? You will see, see here. Finding the designated port, find the switch that has the lowest cost to the root bridge. The first criteria. And if you see from here and from here, cost is similar. to reach the root bridge fine <clears throat> find okay. the find the switch that has the lowest cost to the root bridge okay okay so cost is same fine mm -hmm. now which side has the lowest cost then that side will become the designated port which side of the link has the lowest bridge id after that okay now see here the lowest cost both are having the same cost both are having the same cost see if i am talking about how to choose this port and this port both are having the same cost Mm -hmm. to reach the root bridge fine next line what it is saying lowest cost both are having the same cost which side of the link has the lowest bridge id the lowest yeah. bridge id will become the designated port see if you compare the mac address 
the MAC address of switch 3 and switch 2, you will find the lowest MAC address is this one, switch 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So this will become the designated port. So this will become the designated port. And the remaining port will become the block port. See again. The first thing is they are sharing the PPDU with each other, right? Mm. Okay. Yes. Once they will share the BPDU with each other and they will compare the BPDU, what they are getting from switch 3 and switch 2, switch 1 will compare with its BPDU. BPDU contains the switch priority plus the MAC address. Once they will see the priority value, the priority values are same, then switch 1 will decide with the comparison of MAC address. Once they compare the MAC address, switch 1 will say, I am the root bridge and this information will go to switch 2 and switch 3 also and they will find out that yes the mac address is the root bridge is switch 1 fine okay after that once the root bridge is selected they will select the designated port the port which are directly connected to the root bridge will become the designated port or i can say the lowest cost fine designated ports are the port which is the best cost to the root bridge see here the designated port are these two these are the two designated port after that, they will choose the root port. For criteria to choose a root port is lowest cost towards the root bridge. Now the remaining port is this one, this one, see what are the remaining, remaining ports. This is the remaining port, this is the remaining port, this is the remaining port and this is the remaining port. Okay. So root mm -hmm. port criteria is lowest cost towards the root bridge. If the frame will go here to the root bridge, cost is 19. Between this, the cost is 19. Here the cost is 19, here the cost is 19. So if you try to reach, see if you try to reach from this point towards this side and from towards this side which is which path is the lowest cost which path is having a lowest cost this one right mm -hmm. i'm not able to see the screen okay one minute mm -hmm. Now can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. We can see the screen. Okay. So my question yes. is, wait, one minute. Between these links, there is a cost. Okay. The cost is 19. And this one. Yes, cost is 19. Here the cost is 19. Here the cost is 19. Okay. So okay. if I talk about switch 3, if you go to this side towards the root bridge, and if you go from this side towards the root bridge, which cost side, which path are having a lowest cost? Lowest one is from switch 3 to switch 1. This side, right? Yeah, the left side. Okay, great. Left side of the diagram, yeah. right? Yeah. So because okay. of that reason, this port yeah. will become root port. Yeah. 
Okay. So because of this reason, this port will become the root port. Okay. Now, okay. let's talk about the remaining two ports. What are the remaining two ports? Remaining two ports are DP. This one, right? Designated ports. Yeah. Now the remaining port is this one. Okay. These two ports are remaining. Fine. Are you able to see? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. From switch three to switch two, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So which port okay. will? So our main target is to block one port to stop the loop. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. So which one? Which port will become a designated port, and which port will become a block port? So if you see here, the criteria to choose this is, see, the first thing we will check the lowest cost to, to the root bridge. From this port and from this port, cost will be same. Mm -hmm. The lowest cost will become the designated port, but the cost will be same. So this is not a criteria. We will choose the next one because yeah. because here is a tie, right? Yeah. Yes. Because here is a tie. The next thing is which side of the link has the lowest bridge ID means the MAC address. Which side of the link has the lowest bridge ID? Okay. Now see see by yourself the lowest MAC ID. Choose which one is the lowest MAC ID? Swiss two or Swiss three? Switch two. Swiss two, correct. So that port will become a designated port, and this port will become a block port. That's it. So these process, this process, Cisco switch will do automatically. There is no need to do from our side, but sometimes we have to manipulate. The process and manipulate the root bridge according to our requirement. Let's see this one, this example. Okay. Suppose we have only two switches. Okay. Uh -huh. We have only two switches. Let me find out which one is. Okay. On switch four, let me check the MAC address. You can check the MAC address by giving show version. If you type show version, you can see lot of things are here. Apart from that, the main thing you are going to see here is base Ethernet address. Base Ethernet MAC address. This is the MAC address of your switch. Find triple zero four. Let find mm -hmm. triple zero. Okay. Yeah, triple zero four is the MAC address of switch four. Let me write down here. MAC address is triple zero four. Let's check on switch three. On switch three, show version. Zero zero six zero. Now, can you see that? Where is it? You can't see. No. One minute. I can see. One minute. One minute. Now, can you see? It's still loading. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now I can see. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's the internet MAC address. Yeah. Zero zero six. So okay. zero zero six zero is the MAC address for Swiss three. Zero zero three. Zero zero. One minute. Zero zero six zero. Sorry. Zero zero six zero. Okay. Okay. And remember one thing: 
when there is a two switches are there or three switches are there the switch the switch who will become the root bridge those directly connected ports always will be a designated port uh, can you repeat that again the ports on the root bridge see the ports on the root bridge will always be in the forwarding state that is designated port okay these are four, okay. yeah designated port okay now see the mac address of switch 4 and the mac address of switch 3 if you compare the mac address who will become the root bridge root bridge will be switch 4 why because the mac address is low and what about the priority oh yeah priority yeah the first criteria to choose a root bridge is priority oh, yeah. so in this case oh, yeah. in this case hmm. the priority is same 32768 plus extension number extension number is your vlan id so priority is same here 32768 oh yeah 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 32768 ID plus one is not included here, is it? Plus one. Okay. Now can you see? Uh, no, I can only see the this one, the packet tracer screen. Yes, on the packet tracer screen, the priority value is thirty-two thousand seven sixty-eight plus wow. one. Okay, 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 okay. So plus VLAN ID one, thirty-two thousand seven sixty-eight plus VLAN ID one. Okay. Okay. If the priority is same, then we will move to the next criteria. Next criteria is comparison of MAC address. The lowest yes, MAC yes. address, yeah, the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge. So this is our root bridge. This one. Yes. Okay. Switch four. Yeah. Switch four. Yeah. Switch four will become the root bridge. This will become the root bridge. okay the ports which are directly connected with the root bridge will become the designated port fine the designated port are those port with the best cost to the root bridge so the best cost is here the root bridge on the root bridge so these two will become the designated port designated port these two will become the designated port right okay now we will talk about this one okay. now we have here we have only one switch on the one switch if you are trying to select which one will become the block port and which will will become the root port how you will select then mm -hmm. not sure okay mm. see the first of all you will see lowest cost towards the root bridge again the cost is same here towards the root bridge see the cost is same right 19 cost is same yeah? cost is same correct oh yes yes uh, correct 19 mm. cost is same the second criteria is lowest bridge id now we have only one switch they we cannot compare with the with a switch with a connected switch because here we have only one switch correct yes now the third yes. yeah now the third criteria is lowest port priority value lowest port priority value let me check the port number one minute mm -hmm. f0 by 3 one minute f0 by 1 so these two ports are f0 f by 2 and f0 by 3 right so this one is the f0 by 2 f0 by 2 and on on your right hand side the block port is f0 by 3 correct yes this is f0 by 1 minute 
let me write down FA53. Again, to choose the root port, lowest cost towards the root bridge here in this condition. One minute, I will select one color. We are talking about this topology. One minute, can, can we take a break for some time? I have one phone call to attend. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Sorry, I just got a call. Okay, no problem. Okay, so here we are talking about the blue circle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have to come. We have to check which one will become the root port on this switch, the top one switch. Okay. Okay. Let me give it a name, Swiss 2. Okay, this one. Swiss 2. So on okay. switch 2, if I if I'm trying to find out the root port, the first criteria is lowest cost towards the root bridge. So lowest cost on both the links are same, correct? Yes. Jump both the links are same. It is 90. Yeah. Jump to the second criteria, lowest bridge ID. The lowest bridge ID is the same ID. So I cannot compare, right? Yes. Move to the third criteria, lowest port priority value. The port priority value is also same here. Mm. Yes. One minute, I will show you. We are talking about FA0 by 2 and FA0 by 3. Mm -hmm. Okay. The lowest port priority value. Now, can you see here? Yes, yes, I can see. Yeah. Port priority is also 128. 
Yes. Yes. Last one is lowest port number. The lowest port number is between these two. Lowest port number is F zero by two, right? Lowest port. Sorry, what is it? Lowest. Lowest port number. Where is port number here? Interface. Ah, okay. Interface. Zero by two. Yeah. Uh -huh. Interface In IDs are your port right. numbers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, zero by two is the lowest uh, port number then. Yeah. So it will become a root port. Okay, okay. It will become a root port, and the status will be state will be forwarding, and the F zero by three state will be blocking state. Okay. Okay. So in this way, we do uh, the election process will happen in span entry uh, protocol. Okay. Okay. And if you see here, I will show you one more thing. Yeah. One minute. Huh? On Swiss two. Let me change the host name. Show spanning tree. Host name is okay. Show spanning tree. If you compare this one, okay, switch one yeah. and switch two. Compare this. Uh -huh. Swiss, Swiss two and Swiss three. Compare this. First of all, compare mm. the bridge ID and the root ID. On one switch, you will see the root ID and the bridge ID. Bridge ID address, root ID address, and bridge ID address will be same on one switch. Mm -hmm. See this here. On switch one, you will see root ID address and bridge ID address is same, right? Mm. So initially, yeah. yeah. And here you will see the bridge ID, bridge ID, and the root ID. Right. Mm -hmm. On one switch, mm -hmm. it is different. On on one switch, it is both are same. So initially, with the help of VPDU, they changes their they exchange their bridge ID, their priority value, their MAC address, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the selection process. In this, this bridge is the root bridge. See. Mm -hmm. This bridge, okay. is, this bridge is the root bridge. Mm -hmm. And the bridge ID priority value is 32,768. And the mm -hmm. pri default priority value is 32,768. Extension ID, system ID or extension ID, both are same, is one. See? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Okay, if you change the priority value, for example, let me give you one example. You want this new switch will become the root bridge, or this particular switch, this one, this particular switch. 
will always be a root bridge. So what will you do? Because maybe if I connect this new switch, switch 3, so maybe the root bridge will change. Right? Yeah. So the lowest priority value plus the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge. So the first criteria for the root bridge is lowest priority value. So I will, if I change the priority value